Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Glenn Shelton, owner of Lead Heroes, your favorite insurance lead provider. And this is the Heroes Huddle podcast, where we share sales strategies and marketing methods to help insurance agents succeed. Today, our guest is Matt Mungia, founder of the Insurance Squad. He'll be taking us through the anatomy of a $10,000 week, the math formula behind recreating that $10,000 week, and... 15 ways to scale your sales. Thanks for being here, Matt. Let's jump in. So take me through that. And something that I'm kind of a math guy, I'm a numbers freak. If you talk to my wife, she'll make fun of me. She'll be like, what are you doing? I'll be like, I'm counting this or I'm adding this. And she's like, why are you doing that? And I'm just like, I don't know. I just I just need to know like, what, <laughs> what the numbers are for this. And it's something I've always been fascinated by insurance is I really feel like depending on how much money you want to make, you can pretty much just break it down into a simple equation, right? Depending on... Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... In fact, I made a video about this. I called it the anatomy of a $10,000 week. Yeah, you know? so this I is came it. Off yeah. another break it down for week. me. Yeah, I just come off of another $10,000 week, and I said, you know what? I've been hearing a lot of people asking, like, what does a $10,000 a week entail? I said, all right, well, let me, let me break it down. So $10,000 a week in final expense is I would work 45 direct mail leads a week. I never ordered more than 45. Every once in a while, I would also throw in some internet leads. I would average probably maybe five a week when I did average them. So some weeks I would get around 50 leads, 45 direct mail leads, and five internet leads. And then the majority of the weeks I would get 45 leads. And then you get carryovers too, because some people say, that, look, call me next week. All right. So you know, now you have one less lead this week and one more next week. But I was basically running 45 leads a week. Uh, I was running Monday through Friday, preferably. What I mean by that is if somebody said, look, you know, I can only meet on the weekends. You know, my appointment setter was my wife. So can you come out on Saturday or Sunday? Maybe is that possible? Well, my wife always knows to say yes. I don't we don't turn any appointments down. OK, too many agents are turning away appointments or changing times yeah. to make meet, meet their conveniences. So no, 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 no. If you want to get out there and make the most of this, you got to work on their time. So anyway, Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday, if need be, I don't turn any appointments down and I work from whenever to whenever. So if somebody you know, says, uh, yeah, I can be here, but, you know, I got to I got to be at work at eight. So can he be here at seven or six thirty? Well, guess what? That's when my day is going to start. And if, if that on that same day, if they said, look, can he be here at at, uh, at 8 o'clock because I don't get off till 7? Well, guess what? My first appointment's at 6.30. My last one, I'm going until 8. That's just the way it is. And I tried to always have five appointments a day, okay, Monday through Friday if possible. But some days I had six appointments. Some days I had seven because my wife would set my schedule because she made the calls for me. She was my appointment setter. And this day she might have set up six appointments for me. And two people might have said, well, call me back later. And my wife calls back later and they said, well, I can meet tomorrow at, at six o'clock. And so my wife would and now she would pencil that in. Now I have seven appointments for the next day. But, but I usually try to have at minimum during that time, during that 500,000 plus year, five appointments per day minimum. So you were, you were shooting for 25 appointments a week. Minimum. Minimum. Yep, absolutely. Had now, that's appointments. It doesn't mean I sat right. down with all right. of them. Right. Okay? Yeah, that's step one in the equation, right? Step one is is the yep. appointments. Yeah. Now, out of those 20, let's just say it was, a, it was a minimal week of 25, right? So out of those 25, five appointments a day, you know, maybe four show up on, on Monday. Right. Maybe I only saw three people on Tuesday. Maybe I saw all five on Thursday. You know, maybe I saw one right. on Friday. Right. Who knows? You never know. But my appointment center was with my wife, which, uh, which I trained her up. She's rock solid. So, I mean, we had more good days than bad. A lot of four out of five type of days. My experience, even when I was setting my own appointments, I felt like I was setting usually about half the leads. You know, if you really make sure you're chasing these people down, you know, obviously tons of variables in that, yep. in that scenario. But... I would say usually you're going to set about half your leads. And then this, the set to sit ratio that I typically saw, it was about 75%. So when you're, when you're saying you see four out of five, I totally agree with you. And, and obviously I've had those days too where 
I, I, you set yourself a full schedule. You go out there and you're like, oh, this is going to be a great day. I've got seven appointments on the books. You get home, you saw one person, you didn't close anything, you know, so that's yep. just how it is. Yeah, you know, that fluctuates from day to day. So you, you got to kind of trust, again, trust in those numbers. So tell me about your present. So how many presentations would you, do you think you were averaging on a 25 appointment week? Well, uh, if we take... If we take a 25 appointment week, uh, I'm definitely going to see on average at least three a day. So you're talking about minimum, you know, three times five, so at least 15. And some of those are going to be husband and wife. So, you know, if I'm in front of you, I'm pretty good. I don't know. My, I don't know the exact number. My guess is I'd probably, if I'm sit down with 10 people, I'm going to sell 70% of them, maybe 75% when you start adding in the husbands as well, you know, right. uh, on two of them. The goal is always just get in front of them. Because if I can get in front of you, probably have a pretty good chance of uh, being able to, to help you out with something. So, you know, at least 15 actual sit downs. And I, I know for sure I was averaging right around 15 applications per week during that time. I did take a couple weeks off for vacations of trips that I won the previous year. And so, uh, but I pretty much worked the entire year. I mean, I, I, I didn't I stop. If you told me you worked half a year and wrote 500000 I'd say something's up there. But <laughs> I would imagine. No, I went for course. I mean, I, I tell you how how and why this all, even that year even came about, yeah. this record year. It was like, I think, October of 14, I think it was. I had gone and met somebody that, you know, had a monster year previously. You know, what what's this guy doing? So went, met with him saw his work ethic and his schedule. I mean, he would have 12 to 15 appointments in a day and just pop them off every 30 minutes, pop, 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 pop. I'm like, how do you even do that? He's like, well, you know, you know you're going to get no shows anyway. So it just, you know, he would do that two or three days a week. And I said, wow. So basically, you know, I never had, have had a problem of selling, right? Once I'm in front of you, but that's just work ethic. That's just drive, right. you know? So, I, you know, my mentality was, I, I just need to increase my lead order, increase my activity. I don't see why I couldn't do that either. You know, I feel like I was just as sharp as the guy and knew just as much as the guy. Uh, that's not a knock on him. I'm just saying, what's the difference? And the difference is he was ordering a heck of a lot more leads than me. And he was working a heck of a lot more hours than me. So that's all I did. I implemented, you know, I, I started ordering, I think it was like it's uh, October, November that this happened. So I made it a goal to go crazy because I looked back and I was like, man, you know what? I think at the time I was on maybe 20, 25 leads. I said, I could be doing so much more, you know, making so much more money. Uh, I need to step this thing up. I might've been in 25 or yeah, maybe 25 at the time. So anyway, long story short, I, I bumped that sucker up to 40, 45, maybe around December-ish is when those 45 started coming in and started getting the hang of the schedule and things like that. And my wife had to make more calls, obviously, and she had you know more work ahead of her because right. she was calling on more leads and not door knocking as much either because we're, we have so many appointments to work, you know. And I said, wow. You know, I think this thing is going to work out. And I just went full force for that entire year and busted my tail. Those are the two main factors that I did was just order more leads. And, and which uh, you order more leads, it leads to more activity. Because, yeah. I mean, either that or you're spending that much on leads, you're going to end up you're going to end up going broke if you're not out there working. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, you're all in, right? Yeah, you're all in at that yeah. point. I think if we could sit here, me and you, and diagnose the last 10 final expense agents or probably really any insurance agents and the last 10 agents who failed out of the industry, chances are their activity levels weren't high enough. They weren't seeing enough people. They weren't buying enough leads. They weren't, yeah. you know, and again, even if you don't buy leads, there's still stuff you can do. I mean, you can, you can set up referral networks. You can knock doors. You can cold call your son. Yeah. You know, senior. senior another way senior centers yeah. yeah i mean there's there's so much you can do so it's even i think it's even more basic than not buying buying leads i think is great it's i read an article the other day it was talking about how lead generation is is you're seeing agents and agencies they're able to grow their book of business so much quicker by buying leads but yeah it's really as simple as activity you have mm -hmm. to have enough yeah. activity so 
I want to go back really fast before we move on here, back to your numbers. So you're getting about mm-hmm. 50 leads a week. Your minimum, we're setting hopefully 25 appointments, maybe more. You're making a minimum of 15 presentations, and we're, we're hoping that that leads to about 10 sales. And, and that would be 10, 10 appointments sold. And there's, you know, so you're probably writing a lot of couples in there, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, those are minimums. So, because I, I went back and I looked at some of the weeks, I keep those charts. When I make a sale, I'm old school. So I write everything paper and pen. I mean, I have all the papers from that year. And uh, yeah, I went back and looked at a couple of weeks, a few weeks, and, and it was averaging 15 sales a week, 15, somewhere in that right? Because I, cause I think I did, I wrote over 700 applications uh, that year. And I want to say it was closer to 750 mark, you know, cause I did take, uh, did take a couple weeks off. So at least 700 applications though. So. No, I think if you're saying 15 apps a week, I think that fits pretty purposely. You know, if you're closing 10 appointments, maybe half of them are couples. Yeah. I mean that, that totally sets you up for that $10,000 week. And then, you know, just scaling from there, r- rinse and repeat, right? I mean, don't stop what you're doing. <laughs> it seems silly to say that, but I-, I talk to agents all the time and it seems like, you know, sometimes they'll they'll let their foot off the gas. They have one good week and they're like, oh man, that was awesome. And then it's, you know, I'm going to go do something else now. Or they, they change their tactics. It's, you know, don't stop what you're doing. If, if you're writing 10,000, 5,000, whatever it is, if you're seeing success like that, do not stop what you're doing. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. See, but here's another thing that people don't realize. Most agents don't realize there's a lot more to that system and then there's a lot more to that number uh, as well. So in other words, if I go into a home and I only have three companies to choose from and they have COPD and I don't have any COPD carriers, I can only pitch them, you know, a high priced policy that has a two year waiting period. Well, that client might not be able to afford that or want a two year policy uh, period, a waiting period. So they might tell you to go take a hike. No, let me think about it type of thing. Whereas that same person, if you have all the right carriers at your disposal, like I do, you know, I can get that person first day coverage. I can get them at a price that they probably want. So I'm making more sales just because I have more carriers to run with. Just like I'm making more sales than the average guy out there because most lead companies are mailing age uh, income uh, data income of zero to 50,000 of income, right? Well, my age has, uh, my leads have filters on them, income filters of 15 to 60,000. So I'm sitting in front of more qualified prospects that can afford what I have to offer. You know, so I'm not wasting as much time. I'm weeding through and weeding out of those, weeding those people out, rather, I should say. Right. So, again, all of those little things make up a, a, a year of 500000 Not And that also an appointment setter, my wife. She has a vested interest in me, right, doing right. well. Uh, she gets more <laughs> shoes and more jewelry if I if you make more appointments, right? I, yeah. I'm making more sales. So, again, all of that all those little things that people don't think about, you know, like she's an awesome appointment setter. I trained her up, you know, and, and, uh, and now she trains some of my appointment setters, but, but all those little things, you know, so the quality of, of, of training too, you know, you gotta have a, a mentor that's been in the business, you know, has been in the fire to help you out. Gotta have the amount of carriers that you need. Uh, you know, so instead of, you know, Joe Blow agent that just walked out of that house, I walk in and because, you know, he, he was selling a, something for $80 with a two year waiting period. I go in there and say, look, man, it's $55 and it's immediate coverage. And that same person I make a sale to and Joe right. Blow doesn't, you know, all those little things add up. And we actually have a guy on, on the insurance squad right now that's on pace to to possibly beat my record. Whoa. And all he does is implement yeah all he does is implement the same strategy so him and his wife actually came to san antonio he trained with me in the car for a couple of days i think two or three days and then his wife sat here in uh, in the room i'm sitting in right now while i'm talking to you we call this the war room uh this is <laughs> my, where uh, my wife makes all, all all my appointments for me and uh his wife I, it's set here with my wife for two or three days. So my wife trained her on the phone. He trained with me out in the field. After two or three days, they went back to uh, to their play, uh, their home, 
and implemented the same strategies. He's on 50 leads a week. You know, his wife has her script down now. Uh, he, you know, he came and rode with me and this guy's been in the field for, he had been in the business eight years now. I mean, this is not his first rodeo, but right. first <clears throat> rodeo for final expense. You know, it's a different system. He came from the mortgage protection market. And, uh, long story short, he's on, you know, and he works his tail off, but he implemented the same strategy. He has the same amount of carriers as me. Uh, you know, the, uh, as appointment setters is, is his wife. That you have to have your wife as your appointment setter. You know, we have some good appointment setters, um, here, but, Again, uh, you have all those at your disposal, the amount of carriers, the amount of leads. So the whole system, you know, it has to no, work. I, In order to hit a number like that, I mean, yeah, there's I, a lot of little things you have to have working. I totally agree with you. I and mean, one thing you said earlier that I thought was awesome, when you're talking about keeping your schedule as open as possible to meet with these prospects, yeah. I, I remember with, you know, when I was selling mortgage protection, I kind of the same idea. I, I had the same kind of realization where if I can meet these people, you know, whenever they're willing to meet me, whereas there's there's all those other lazy agents out there who they're wanting to work Monday through Friday. They want to be home by set, you know, whatever it is, right, where they're, where they're keeping their schedules closed. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but when you're willing to keep your schedule open, you know, like I remember just specifically there was one gentleman, he's like, I can only meet Sunday morning. He's like, I'm only available Sunday morning. I'm not available anytime rest of the week. And I said, fine. I was like, I'm happy to sit down with you, you know, and, and I ended up writing a deal out there because the other agents who had contacted him, they weren't willing to meet with them on Sunday, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, little the, little that, things. He knows, you know, he's willing to do things that yeah. other agents are. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Driving a little further. You know, that's all these little things. Like you said, you know, driving a little further maybe than, than most agents would. Meeting with people at different times or different days when most agents wouldn't, you know, buying more leads while most agents won't do that. You know, all those little things. You're totally right. It all adds up. It's a total trickle down theory. The more things you're doing that others aren't going to do, you know, you're going to start reaping the rewards. I totally believe that. So, yeah. Something that are you so you got your wife setting appointments, which I think is brilliant. I went personally, I went through three different appointment setters, and I feel like I had success on different levels with all of them. The problem is, you know, when you're spending money on leads and they're not financially invested in those leads, I feel like there's there can be a big miss as far as quality of appointments or amount of appointments, you know, that's where I think you, you hit the home run with having your wife as your appointment setter is she's financially invested in those leads just as much as you are. She totally understands yeah, that just, concept. Uh, um, when I came into final expense, I was trained by somebody that, you know, just worked a totally different system. So I started off this business door knocking 100% of my leads. I said, you know, it's not that door knocking is bad. It's just that it's just not efficient. There's no way you're going to write 500,000 door knock. It ain't going to happen. I, I don't care who you are. I don't care what year it is. It's not going to happen, right? <laughs> so, so you know, so I said, man, there's got to be a more efficient way to right. do this thing. Actually, my, my wife was working at the time. And anyway, I, I said, you know, I, man, it seems like when I get in front of somebody, I, I can I can make the sale, you know. But, you know, for years and years and years, I made calls. Of my, I made my own appointments my own calls. And I said, I, I told my wife, I said, look, I think we can make this work. You know, you can quit your job and just set appointments for me. It won't take but an hour or two per day. I wouldn't think, you know, this is all unknown stuff, right? I mean, we're just kind of right. guessing the plane here. You got to understand I've been door knocking my entire life or set my own appointments. So long story short, she, uh, yeah, that's what happened. I mean, she quit a job that she was making some some decent coin at and we took that risk and we took that leap of faith and jump and it turned out beautifully for us i mean we were just hoping to maybe minimize her not getting crushed so much by her leaving her job as it worked out we made above and beyond you know awesome. what she lost at her nine to five Re or whatever really fast if off the top of your head what is the script that you typically use, whether you're setting appointments yourself or if you're having your wife set appointments, what do you guys typically say on the phone for that? I think that might be- It's nothing nothing special, yeah. you know, and, and to be honest, I, since my wife's been calling for me for years right now, I wouldn't even hardly know how to begin the script, but, but it's gotta be something, the most basic of scripts uh, that anybody says like, hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, we have a, you sent in this card, you know, it looks like here your, your age is whatever, 67. 
and your husband's 64. Well, um, do I have a, you know, the licensed agent in your area going to be there tomorrow to get that information out to you? Take about five to seven minutes and, you know, let you know what your options are since you do qualify for this. When would be a good time for him to swing on out there and get this information to you? You know, that something simple, basic. And there's really no magic uh, button on that kind of stuff. And that's just me recalling years ago or, you know, what, what we, what I used to say somewhere, somewhere to that, to that effect. If I had to start, if they told me I had to start calling again tomorrow, <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at my old videos and, and see what I actually said. Right. <laughs> no, I'd be just fine. I, I think, well, just one thing I wanted to hit on that. I mean, just keeping it simple. When, when I was trained as a mortgage protection agent, I was trained to do a lot more qualifying on the phone. And I almost kind of cringe thinking back now because, you know, the appointment setting script that I recommend to agents and the one that has a final expense agent that that I would use just really brief into the point. I mean, if you're trying to sell face to face, I personally don't see the value in doing a bunch of qualification for an appointment. You know, most of these people, once you sit down with them, you know, once you get in front of them, you can qualify them as much as you want. And then if you're trying to get paid by writing an application face to face, you know, you can't do that over the phone. Now, if you're trying to sell over the phone, that's a completely different story to be had. But um, yeah, I mean, so I, I always recommend just something really brief, you know, hey, you yeah, know. The KISS method, right? Yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, yep. Too many agents, well, you know, especially mortgage protection uh, agents that come over, they're they're taught to, you know, get so much information over the phone. Well, you can't do that in final expense. Your your job is just to get in front of them. Once you're in front of them, it's showtime. It's game time. Right. Now you ask whatever questions you need to. The good part about mortgage about uh, final expense is that, you know, between the ages of 25 and 85, we have a product. You know, I don't care how beat up you are. We pretty much have something for you. I mean, we have Columbia. Columbia has their guaranteed issues starting at age 25, and you know AIG is up to age 85. So I mean, 25 to 85. So you don't need to know that kind of information immediately. You know, you need to know if they're between those ages. You you probably have a product for them, no matter what their health is like. So it's about getting in front of them. Yeah. Right. That that's the ultimate goal. Once you're in front of them, that now now it's you know you work your magic and you do your thing. No, I totally agree. Totally agree. One one other question I had for you about kind of your five hundred thousand premium year, um, and you you t- you touched on this earlier. You were talking about the different carriers and and mentioned you know. And when I first started exploring the insurance industry, I, I thought I'm like, man, this is a no brainer. I need to be a broker and not a captive agent. If you're a captive agent, your hands are tied. You know, you're you're stuck with the products that one carrier has. You might not be price competitive. You might not have the underwriting to to get people qualified. So, you know, one of the things I immediately realized is I need to be able to broker different carriers. And you you mentioned this earlier, how that was kind of a, a one of the key parts of your five hundred thousand dollar year is brokering different carriers. Would you say you were pretty diverse? Was there one or two that got most of your business? You don't have to necessarily give specific carriers. I'm just curious, kind of a breakdown of of where most of your business went as far as spreading the love. I know there's probably some where... I did. Yeah, yeah um, just give me a little... I wrote... Yeah, I, somebody had, else had asked me that same question a while back. And uh, so I actually went back and counted. So I already, I already know it was over 20. I think wow. it was like 20 different carriers is when it was all said that's, and done. That's a yeah, broker. Somebody, that's a true broker right there. I, it's... <laughs> It's funny, well, yeah. man. I talk to insurance agents. I talk to brokers, and and I'll be like, "So what carriers?" Are you? And they'll be like, "Oh, I've got like two carriers that I offer." It's like you're not even really a broker at that point, you know. If you're selling one carrier, maybe two carriers, you know, that's impressive. Uh, Twenty three different carriers. Yeah. Now, now keep in mind, um, you know, some of these I might have only written one or two of them. But the yeah, I mean, I wrote with a bunch of them. Right now, my hot ticket, I like Mutual of Omaha. You know, Mutual of Omaha, the, you know, Trinity is always a good hot ticket because they take so many things. But I spread the business out quite a bit. You know, I came from New York Life. You know, one I had one, uh, it was a one-trick pony. If you couldn't qualify for New York Life, you know, I had to walk away. And so it's nice to be able to be like, you know, what's your ailments? Oh, you got this, that, and the other perfect. I, I can still get you first aid coverage for a majority of my clients, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's cute. You know, when you get into a competitive situation, when 
when an agent's following up, you know, if these people are talking to someone else, you know, being able to say you have the best coverage possible for you. You know, I work with all the carriers. Yeah, and here's another thing is that, you know, the agents will call me, right, because there's over 100 agents on the squad. So I'll, I feel phone calls all day, and somebody will say, well, I'm sitting down with Mr. Jones, and he has COPD and lupus. So, okay, well, we have a cheat sheet that, you know, that I've built uh, with all, you know, so that you don't have to think too much about, um, you know, all the millions of carriers that we do have, so it kind of breaks it down. So. So there's nothing, though, more frustrating sometimes uh, because it only hurts the agent. And, you know, they have to walk away from business a lot of times. You know, they say, well, I don't have Americo yet. I, I haven't signed up with Americo. You know, and, and Americo might be the only company that will take that person for whatever reason, you right. know, or or American Home Life. Right off the top of my head, Parkinson's, you know, American Home Life will take Parkinson's preferred coverage. You know, it's, it's I think it's one of the only ones that will take it as preferred. There's several that will take it day one. But preferred uh, American home life. Well, I don't have American home life. Well, you know, it might cost you that sale, you know, and that sale yeah. might be a thousand bucks. You know, you don't know. So I always say get all the carries you can. You know, it's better to have them and not need them than to need them. Yeah, that's a philosophy I, I carry in all aspects of business. You know, I'd rather have something and not need it than, you know, need Bingo. something yeah. and not have it. So I totally agree with that. Client, we touched on this, client tracking. So you're telling me you wrote over 700 applications. I mean, that's a ton of paper, a ton of just people to track in general. You're probably getting phone calls. I mean, what what were you doing to, to kind of track these people? Old school stuff. Again, I'm archaic when it comes to that stuff, but everything was done pen and paper. Each time I would write an app, uh, that when the day is over, I come in and I you know get everything faxed off. And then I log everything in a binder that I have, you know, so I'll write the day that I wrote the application, let's just say January 1st, 2015. And then I would write the uh, day that the, the withdrawal is going to be. So say February 1st, 2015. And then I would write the per client's name and then the company I sold and then how much the premium was. And, and that's all done by, uh, by paper, you know. So that's how I tracked everything, you know, and I have cabinets filled in my garage. It's, it's quite enormous and quite annoying, to be honest. I mean, I have, a, I have to have like a, you know, a big portion of my, my garage, two car uh, garage. Uh, <laughs> one, one whole car could fit in, in the amount of uh, people that have been here and seen it. That's just crazy. the cabinets. So good part about this is that there's an app coming out that's going to help with all this kind of stuff i'm actually beta testing it right now it's called uh my mo pro oh yeah uh, my yeah it's uh short for my mobile office professional so M Y M O pro so my mo pro anyway and it's actually going to launch here in the next next probably next 10 days or so is what they said but anyway i'm in beta testing for it and it's specifically designed for life and health agents, just like just like us, to keep track of these types of things. So I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And I just worry about selling. But there's nothing like it in the industry. I mean, it's pretty awesome. It has a built-in CRM, so there'll be no more writing stuff down. I, I had the, the another CRM system, you know, that I also use. So I would implement this into into with writing. Then I would implement it into my CRM. Well, this is going to have all that stuff in it. It's going to have CRM. It's going to have built-in lead routers so you can input your all your leads into this and it'll route the most efficient way. So if you're a door knocker or, uh, or you know, whatever, it's going to do right. all that kind of stuff to make it efficient if you're door knocking and running appointments. Uh, allows you to up upload your leads into the app. Um, you can even put a picture. Here's the coolest thing. Well, I thought I was dealing with it the other day. You could put the client's picture because I like to take client's pictures with my clients like you know, right. whoever i helped out i take a picture of them well now you can take a picture of them up and upload that onto their their lead uh card that's into this 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 app type thing when the number pops up or you call them you know you can their their, their face pops up also so you can you can know who, you, who your client is so when you're talking to them you know who, who you're talking to because as you know just that we have thousands of clients and, yeah and you know they oh you don't know who, you're, who in the world you're into a lot of time. I've heard some about this app. I've, I've poked around with it a little bit. I'm, I'm fellow beta testing as well. 
it seems like it could be a game changer. I mean, similar to what you mentioned with your $500,000 a year, when I'm writing mortgage protection or even when I was writing final expense, I my, my, my method of, of tracking or uh, you know, sorting my leads, I, I would have basically different folders marked per county. And it was like one side was like closed leads or appointment leads. And then the other side was just leads that hadn't been contacted yet. And I'm just, based on the county I'm in, I'm working with that folder. I mean, it, it really was, it was a nightmare. So, I mean, this, this looks like it could be really big for health and life agents. I mean, I was talking to a uh, clue from radius bob and when when you're talking about a crm you know whether you're using a free crm system or a paid system like mimo pro or radius bob if you get one more sale per year because you're more efficient at tracking it's going to pay for itself so i mean when you when you think about it like that i mean it's a no-brainer i mean be more efficient, stay more organized. You're going to make more sales, just like what we talked about earlier when you said, I'm doing all these little things that are adding up. I being, you know, tracking your being clients. Tough. Yeah, it's it's just another one of those and, and little I'm things. Doing same thing. And I'm doing the same thing right now. I'm paying for Radius Bob. My subscription there, I think, is 15 or $20. I'm paying for FEX Quotes. That's another $15, $20. But it, it totals to about... You know, I think around I'm paying around close to eighty dollars with all the little apps that I'm using right now. So that's another thing about this this MIMO Pro app is going to have a quote engine too. So so it's going to have that quoter uh, built in there. So I said, well, if I can consolidate everything and have everything into one, I, I'm actually saving money. I don't know how much they're going to put this thing out for. Hopefully, hopefully it's going to be nice, but it should save me money because I'm paying about eighty something dollars yeah. a month right now on all these different applications. And now I can just have it in one and again, be more efficient with my stuff and have it all at my fingertips because it's going to, it's, you know, be on your phone and tablet and any, anything else. Yeah, no. And this is actually, this kind of leads into my final question, you know, future of final expense, any trends that you're seeing in the industry, just to kind of wrap this thing up, what, what do you see the future holds for final expense? Any, anything as, you know, a, a producer, um, someone who owns a final expense agency, what what kind of things are you seeing that that could be coming up well, or changing for agents? It's going to get a little more competitive over time, you know, because right now final expense is a hot ticket, kind of like mortgage protection was a while back. So it'll be more competitive. So it's super important to get with the right organization to begin with and get a mentor, somebody that knows that they've been through the final expense battlefield. They know what they're doing. You know, that's, that's, unfortunately, that's one of the biggest, mis it's not so much a mistake. They just don't know any better. You don't know what you don't know. Like me, right. when I first started, I didn't, I didn't know who to reach out to or where to go, where to turn, you know? So yeah, that, I ended up that, that combined. That 55% contract probably looked pretty good. I, mean, I started on 60 points, man. So, <laughs> so trust me, I know, I yeah. know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. You know, getting, getting hooked up with someone who knows what they're doing. I mean, that's, that's yeah. important. Somebody that has a system in place, they know what they're doing. It can help you guide you. They have all the tools that you'll need in order to be successful. And then the rest is up to you, you your work ethic, your drive. And, but I think the industry is going to be strong for a while. I mean, the baby boomers are not going anywhere. I mean, uh, you know, at least at least 10 more years to where it's just uh, all the baby boomers are are still driving this uh, industry. Um, right. So I think it's going to be strong for uh, for a good while. And um, I'm just going to ride the wave. No, I I actually and this kind of segues to my the book that you know, I co-authored and put out how to qualify, present and sell final expense and Medicare supplements to seniors. That was something that, that we talk about a lot. I mean, there's, you've got 10,000 people turning 65 every day. That's continuing for about 10 to 15 years. And then, you know, you also have insurance agents who are going to be retiring. So you have more seniors coming into the market. You have you know, more agents leaving the market. So I really think it's a perfect storm for anybody listening who wants to get involved in the senior insurance market. I think it's it's a slam dunk. I really do. Whether it's you're selling final expense, Medicare supplements, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is you're wanting to get involved with, I think there's just going to be a lot of opportunity for the next decade. 
at least. And that actually I almost forgot. So one thing I wanted to mention too, so staying on track and staying motivated. This is chapter 10 in our book. And we have you, we, we quoted you. Our, our book, we actually surveyed hundreds of agents. We only took the top, I'd say the top 30% of surveys we received as far as their sales process and what they're doing. And and Matt, you were kind enough to take one of our surveys. So uh, appreciate that. But yeah, what in chapter 10, we have you quoted for, for staying on track and staying motivated. Carry your trips. Travel is my family's favorite thing to do. That's enough incentive to keep me going. And I noticed on your website, theinsurancesquad.com, um, you, you have these awesome pictures of you traveling all around the world with you and your wife. I think there's one, uh, you riding an elephant. Um, it, it just looks like you're having the time of your life. I mean, I, I've done some world traveling too, and, and I, can, I totally agree. It's, it's so much fun, especially when you can do it with a loved one. Uh, take me through that really fast too, before we, before we get out of here, what, um, you know, yeah, staying motivated I mean, is huge. And if you're doing, if you're writing 10,000 a week and you're doing it for a year straight, like you did, I mean, you really got to stay on track and stay motivated. For me, that's always travel is one of the, you know, my favorite things to do. Uh, you know, so, so, the, so you got to find what motivates you. Some people are motivated by money. Okay, they can have a money goal. You know, some are motivated by travel. Whatever it is, you got to have goals. And for me, goals were you know, a lot of times trips. You know, so, so, all right. So if I want to win a trip to Hawaii, like let's just take the Trinity trip for instance. This year is coming up to, to Hawaii, or or to Ireland for Mutual of Omaha. You know, then then set out that goal. You can you can, uh, but but goals are super important because when you have those bad days, when you know when you have all those no's in a row, that's what keeps you fighting for your goal. And trips are the reward for that. You know, so it's the reward for all your hard work that you put in for a solid year. And it's like you know, it keeps you on track. It keeps you motivated and and active and gives you something to shoot for, you know, when you do have those down days or, or down weeks, because, you know, this this business is a roller coaster, and sometimes it's hard. So, you know, for me, it was always trips, you know, if I want to go to, uh, I've been to a lot of places, but, you know, to uh, to Bangkok, Thailand, you know, because because uh, a, a company's going there. Well, then I, I, I put that on track, you know, so if it takes 70,000 to win it, you know, I, I break it down. Uh, how much is that per month? Okay, it's, it's going to be I don't know, 6,000 per month. Okay. And then break it down per week. Okay. I need to do, you know, 12 or 1500 because some of it will fall off. A little bit will fall off. Right. You know, my persistence has always been 90% or better typically, but so, you know, so you got to account for all that kind of stuff. So, okay, well, I need to write 1500 per week with this company and I get to go to Thailand. How cool is that? And 1500 a week with one company is not that, not that hard, you know? So, I mean, they make these trips pretty darn easy to win as long as you're getting in front of a lot of people. You know, and uh, so it, it, that means you need to buy leads or or whatever or do more senior centers or whatever. You need to get in front of more people. But that's 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 your tracker right there. And that's another thing that MIMO Pro uh, has, which I think is pretty cool, is a tracking system. It's a goal tracker. So it, it will keep you in line. But, yeah, you got to have goals and something to shoot for. And, and um, the tra trips has always been my incentive to, to work hard. Yeah. Tell me, you have any carrier trips you're going on this year? You won last year? Yes. We are leaving in about a month and a half to an Alaskan cruise. Oh, man. Uh, the unfortunate part is I won another trip, and it's going to the same darn place on another Alaskan <laughs> cruise. <laughs> so, oh, that's... <laughs> good problems to have, yeah. but it's unfortunate. You know, we had three different carrier trips all going to Alaska this year. Wow. So that's no... It's all... Someone... Someone... Run with it, but... uh. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, the the, the want a trip just about to win or just want a trip uh, to Hawaii also, uh, but that's coming up in 2018, and I'm on track for some other ones too. So things are going good here at the Insurance Squad. Uh, you know, I think I think the big thing is the industry is good. Get with the right people at the right time, with the right systems, and with the right carriers, right leads, then everything can can work out. You know? Yeah. No, I I think you're right. I think. I think this this was a really good, really good breakdown of you know how to scale the business, how to take advantage of putting a system in place, adhering to that system, and reaping the reward. I think you had a really great system in place, 
and you were doing things that a lot of other agents weren't willing to do. Well, listen, I want to thank Matt Mungia for joining us today and talking about final expense and the anatomy of a $10,000 week. Be sure to check out our blog on leadheroes.com where you can find a transcript of today's episode along with some helpful slides to recap what we covered today. Thank you everyone for listening and as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you again for the next Heroes Huddle.